Hey, welcome back. It is Wednesday, the middle of the week. Hope you're having a good week. Start things off tonight with the master of trends, Gerald Salenti, who is with us once a month, to spend an hour of his valuable time with all of you folks who really appreciate it, and I get a lot of emails. Thank you. Hello, Mr. C. How are you? Oh, great being with you, uh, Jeff. Thanks for having me on. I'm doing My great. My pleasure. As we, uh, as we look around this this planet, which does seem to be in serious decline on all fronts, or nearly all fronts, what we're seeing in the media is is a constant diet of slaughter and death. And this isn't Hollywood stuff. This is, you know, they're desensitizing everybody with the real deal. Slaughter in Egypt, another 300 or so dead. I don't know what the total there is. Let's not forget about the other slaughters, though, folks. How about the slaughters in Yemen by Obama death drones? Uh, in Gaza by Israelis' new killer drones, or that devastated wreck, that shell, that ghost of a country, Iraq, destroyed and decimated by Western banking interests and personally delivered by, of course, Bush and the American military. Uh, Car and suicide bombings uh, almost daily now, killing scores and scores of people. Uh, Syria, maybe up to 100,000 dead there by mercenary terrorists paid for by American tax dollars, the Brits, the French, and the others. Ultimately, you know who. Uh, Afghanistan, gosh, 12 years of death and slaughter by uh, this great republic of ours. Uh, Northern Pakistan, Obama death drones at work there too. And let's not forget the uh, corpse of Libya, which again was once a remarkable uh, Arab country now reduced to rubble. And don't forget the first announcement by the terrorists that were sent into Libya, and many of them went on to fight and die in Syria, as some of you know. The first announcement in Libya, Gerald, was the opening for business. This is, the, the, this is in Benghazi. This is the terrorist mercenary army that uh, ultimately took Muammar Gaddafi down and killed him. Their first announcement was that the brand new Central Bank of Libya was open for business. The second announcement was that there were brand new oil contracts available. So it's again the Rothschild City of London central banking template, which is being installed in country after country. Iraq didn't have it. Libya didn't have it. Iran doesn't have one. North Korea doesn't have one. And Cuba doesn't have one. Pretty much everybody else does. Uh, Anyway, it's a pretty grotesque scene out there, but the sad part for me is our young people are growing up with death and violence constantly in their faces. If they even choose to look at the faux news that's out there, the the lies the MSM puts forth, it's quite a scene. Yeah, and then, of course, you know, let's look over in Bahrain. Uh, That's ready to explode right now, but who cares about... Bahrain. I mean, the United States has the Fifth Fleet Station there right. and, you know, in the Gulf Kingdom. They have a great democracy, those Gulf Kingdoms, you know, yeah. kings. And then, of course, um, there's also Tunisia, lest mm-hmm. we forget that. Mm-hmm. And that was the first kickoff of the so-called Arab Spring, which we said from the very beginning, we wrote about it before we ha- it happened, we wrote history before it happened in the Trends Journal. We said these are no Arab Springs. These are not pro-democracy movements. These are people rising up against dictators who and their people are poor. And you know my saying, when people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. Uh-huh. This has nothing to do with, you know, we're looking for democracy. Oh, yeah. You mean like democracy in the United States? The democracy where... Oh, that not only could they stop and frisk you, they could listen and watch you in everything that you do. Oh, that democracy, the democracy that you call elections that are controlled by a two-headed one-party system, a political mafia. Oh, that democracy. So anyway, this had nothing to do with democracy, what's going on over there. And then, of course, there are those countries that no one really cares about. I mean, you mentioned Iraq and, you know, every day virtually, you know, there are suicide bombers and people yeah. dying in Iraq. Yeah. It doesn't make the news. Hey, three people died in Boston. Yes, a tragedy, but there's those tragedies are monumental in scope that are created every day in Afghanistan and Iraq. But 
worse than that, of course, you know, these people are dark toned skin, so they don't count as much. And the ones that really don't count at all, eh, what's going on in the Congo? Who cares? Yeah, you, you get know, into sub Saharan yeah, Africa. Then they're really, you know, of course, you know, nobody cares about <laughs> nobody them count. because they're not white like us. That's right. So they don't count as much. Yeah. When white people get killed, like what happened over there in the UK, when some angry Middle Eastern guy killed a British soldier for destroying their country, oh, it was great outrage. But when the British colonialist murderers go into foreign countries with their sun never sets over the English empire BS that they're still hanging on to, then that's okay. You can kill all of them that you want, but no, no, no. You can't kill any of those Americans or the French or the English or any of the Westerners because they're better than everybody else and they're bringing peace and freedom and democracy <laughs> to people around the world. Yeah, it's a, a glorious sight to behold. You said something else, and uh, I'd kind of like to segue into what's happened to the American law enforcement profession and how many of these men and women uh, sh should no more be wearing a badge than a snail, uh, an insane snail at that. These people are crazy. Uh, they, you said that they could cops here can stop and frisk you. They can also, oh, yeah. and What's they do, they, they, they can stop and kill you. And they well, you do don't even have to too. do anything, and they'll kill you. They That's just right. killed a guy with a gar holding a garden hose, a SWAT team in, in, in California. They thought it was a gun. Yeah. You know, and these guys are armed. I mean, there was bulletproof stuff all over them. And they have enough armaments to go to the battle of the bulge Brave on men, aren't they? Brave. Yeah, and they blow every... Right? He made a threatening move, I tell you. You're a cop. You're supposed to be able to deal with this. And that's the other thing. One cop gets killed, they close down the city. <laughs> true. You know, really. Oh, oh, he died. You, hey, you wanted that job. It came with that risk. Capisha? That's why you took the job. Absolutely. Totally but right. Close, but one of us gets killed. Eh, you know, we should hey, have been more careful. We don't count five, as much. Over, if we don't. Over 500 Americans now, by my count, executed by Taser. Taser. And they train that? these guys to shoot in the heart. They shoot right for the chest. They don't shoot for the legs. They shoot for the heart with these damn uh, 50,000 volts. And they wonder why people die. How they about just this killed guy? They killed a 95-year-old guy the other day. That's exactly right. I mean, they're, they're out of their minds. America's turning into a military state. It's fascism. I said this when George W. Bush, when he began the Too Big to Fail program under Henry Paulson, Frankenstein Paulson, former CEO of Goldman Sachs and U.S. Yeah. Treasury Secretary. Yeah. I said that's the merger of state and corporate powers. There's no such thing in capitalism as too big to fail. It's fascism. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing the fallout of fascism. You have the corporations in charge. Look, pick up the papers today. There's this whole thing going on. Should it, you know, American Airlines uh, merge with... Uh, uh, what's that other one? U.S. Air. Oh, yeah, should the terrible merge with the worst. Mm -hmm. And and again, I'm old enough to remember before deregulation when flying was fun. And that little weasel, that Alfred Kahn that worked for Carter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Another arrogant guy. Oh, guess what? He's dead. I love these guys, how arrogant they aren't after they're dead. Like Koch. He was another one. Mayor Koch. You yeah. know. Another arrogant, ar well, you're dead, oh, yeah. Jack. You're only dust. Get over your ego trip while <laughs> you're alive, you know? <laughs> True. No, <laughs> repent, forget it, folks. They only get worse. They don't give up their guns. They go right down with their egos blazing. It, it's true. Koch, I forgot about it. I forget, there's too many to keep track of. That was an interesting little flashback there. Mayor Ed Koch, didn't he turn out to be... He had some big skeleton in his closet. I can't remember what it was now, but they all do. All right, hold on just a second. We'll come right back. Trends Research and the master of trends, Gerald Salenti. In just a minute.
It would hard to be be hard to be an, an intelligent member of this this society and and not not know what was going on. I mean, Gerald was telling people years and years ago. We were telling people this whole NSA Ed Snowden thing. Everything is monitored. Everything is data based and data mined, and it's not slowing down. Don't buy. The, did you see the performance of the uh, imposter in chief on Leno's uh, program? Did uh, you see uh. Leno hug him? Did you see that subservience, that despicable butt licking? Unbelievable. Yeah, the whole thing is a disgrace, and people buy it. You know, going back, you know, what I was saying about you know today talking about that merger and what, what, where we're turning into a fascist state, oh, yeah. and the merger of state and corporate powers. So now we have a handful of airlines. Back when I was a young guy traveling, you know, in in the seventies, early seventies, when first class was really first class, and it wasn't like a day in Calcutta going to the airports. The um, and, you know, there, there was Northwest, there was Braniff, there was Eastern, there was TWA, there was, there were, you know, hundreds of airlines. And they were literally. competing, and they were competing on the basis of service. And exactly. that's what made the difference. Exactly. So what they did is they deregulated and put it in the hands of a few, and the whole system declined. And then you pick up the paper again today, and you read about the merger of hospitals. Now these mega hospitals are buying out all the other hospitals. So here's the deal. Let's take every industry. We could go airline. We could do communications. We could do banking. We could do agriculture. We could do retail. And you could break it up into the retail. And you, oh, could, sure. do, you could do pharmacies. You can do uh, uh, stationery stores, hardware stores, mm-hmm. uh, clothing stores, everything in the hands of a few. So it doesn't take a genius, a trend forecaster, or anyone to figure it out that has half a brain and is half awake. You're working in a plantation economy. You're never going to own your own shop, chances are. Whether, whatever you dream you have of going into business, and you're taking these moronic courses in school called business administration. Oh, my God. And yeah. then you can't get a job, so you're going to get an MBA. Yeah. Yeah. You're great. So you go deeper in debt and you still haven't learned anything. So now you go and you, and you take it to the next level. You're going to get out of school and what are you going to get a job as? A floor manager maybe someday when you grow up in Staples? Maybe you could work in CVS? I got a, how about a nice job in Papa John's? Or maybe go. Olive Garden. There's yeah. a job for Ooh. you. So when you look at the consolidation of business into the hands of a few, you can see where the future is going. And the future is going like this. When you look at the jobs that were created in the last year, the numbers don't lie. Government does, but the numbers don't. And the numbers show that the majority of jobs, over 70% of them, have been in low-paying industries. And the majority are in waitresses and bartenders. Sure. The majority are in healthcare services. Yeah. The majority are in temporary work. And and nearly ninety percent of the jobs are temporary jobs. I was gonna say that's the whole trend. It's all going temp, uh primarily of course because of Obamacare. I did an email from somebody today that uh, uh was very interesting. He looked at the actual Obamacare rate calculator premium. For he, he's 55 and his wife is 47, it came out to be $17,000 a year. $17,000 a year. $14,232 out of pocket a year. And if you don't pay, the IRS comes after you. What did they hire? 28, 29,000 IRS agents to enforce a health care program? It has nothing to do with health. And 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 then you take that level again. The premium by insurance companies. Again, when I was a young guy, there were hundreds of insurance companies in the business that will that will sell you medical insurance at very low rates. And then again, everything has been consolidated. It's a takeover. It's a fascist That's takeover. A coup. Exactly. It's a coup. It's a, oh, but oh, but you don't, they'll never call it a coup, Jeff, because after all. The United States still refuses to call it a coup in Egypt. You know that. That's right. They refuse to call it a coup. They overthrew the democratically elected government, the Morsi government. Like them or hate them, it's not the issue. 
They overthrew the government. Oh, and yesterday, I love this one. <laughs> the government installed, out of 25 provincial governors, 19 of them from the military, generals, 19 generals installed as provincial governors in Egypt. But don't you call it a coup, because I heard James Carney, you know, Carney is the slang word for carnival man, yeah, yeah. The, the mouthpiece for yeah. Obama, Hustlers. say they have not decided yet whether it's not, it's a coup. Now, the reason being <laughs> because they could then send uh, $1.5 billion of our money to the Egyptian military because it's against the law to send our money to a country that's been overtaken by a coup d'etat. So it's not a coup. Our money's going over there. So all you people that are having trouble making ends meet, can't pay the bills, your job stinks, your money's going to foreign countries that are running criminal operations, just like they're running criminal operations here. It's all true, and it's... It, let me ask you, Master of Trends, when you look ahead, and you do all the time, do you see anything trending toward the positive? Anything of substance or significance that's truly going to benefit or otherwise turn the society from its headlong rush into oblivion back to an enlightened path of at least quasi-spiritual grace, concern for fellow man, uh, decency, uh, common sense, if nothing else. Common sense died years ago. It was no burial, but it was dead. Uh, do you see anything that's, that's you know, turning? Here, here's, here's what I think has to happen. Um, two weeks ago, uh, Saturday, not this past, last Saturday, but Saturday before, they had this up in Phoenicia, New York, which isn't far from Colonial Kingston, where I'm at. They had the Festival of Voices. And it's a first-rate opera they put on. I mean, as good as, you know, the, the New York Met. And, uh, really? it was, wow. it, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, really top, top rate, you know, and, and they had, and they're going to be doing it actually in, in Kingston as well. And, and I went to see Rigoletto oh, and, well, and, yeah. and the next day was, uh, the Requiem. I don't like the Requiem. Pre no, I never did either. I don't yeah, understand it. But take it. Goodbye. School, you know? Get it out of here. Get yeah. I don't want to hear another Kyrie A. No, thank and you. It, and, and anyway, I, I thought to myself... What would happen to Verdi? What he got into him? So he must have done it for money. I don't money. know. You know, everybody has their up and down days, yeah, you yeah. know. So anyway, I thought to myself, to answer your question, I said, now more than ever, we need a de Medici. We need enlightened people with a lot of money to start really putting it into the true arts. Well, we need to bring the arts back. Let just jump, jump to the chase here, or cut to the chase, or whatever you do to the chase. We need to put music back in the schools. Music history. We need to put music art history and back. Art. I'm talking about grade school stuff, folks, and carry it right on through secondary school. Got it. Yeah, so that's what we need as I see it. It's not going yeah. to, the human spirit's not you know, going to awaken without it. Now, you, oh, no chance. You know folks and Gerald knows too when and you've seen these they call what do they call them flash flash mobs and where uh, uh, a local uh, symphony orchestra or an opera company will go into a mall and they'll dress up as, as staff working at the various stores and and they'll be the busy mall and they'll, they'll be out there and they'll start singing and they invariably start to sing something from an opera and the crowds freeze they're mesmerized, and of course the camera's panning around, close-up face, close-up eyes, smiling, and the people, you he you see them being touched by 200-year-old music, 150-year-old music. You see what the magic of great music can do. These people are just knocked over. They're blown away. They've, some of them never heard anything like that before, but it gets them where they need to be reached. And that's what we're talking about here. All right, I'll be right back in just a couple.
One of the many tools with which this country has been brought down so far so fast, of course, is the, the death of the arts. This is all being done by design. Uh, every city used to, when you were a kid, Gerald, every city, everywhere you went, had a, a classical music station, 24 hours a day. You know, no more. Yeah, no, they, they used to they have them. Too, you know, they, yeah, both of them. Hey, but again, you know, to answer your question, do I see anything? Yeah. I don't see anything in the absence of that. It can, in my belief, it cannot happen. It, because to me, art is the way of finding the true meaning of the human spirit. And of course, I'm talking about art in all its forms. Uh, you know, not only you know, on canvas and in, in, in all of its art. And so unless that happens, I don't see any real change. Well, you know, uh, we can also carry it a little further and say the way people live their lives is art as well. They become enlightened through the arts and they manifest that in their day-to-day -day living and their behaviors. And I don't care if it's a, a little tiny act of kindness or a, or a large sweeping gesture by someone who has we means and wealth, good is no longer chic and trendy. Good is corny. Good is mocked in too many Hollywood films. The good little kid, the nice little boy, the nice little girl, mocked, picked on. Uh, you know the story, folks. And uh, we have a, a spiritual crisis in, in this country. It has been engineered. It didn't just happen. These people who are, are running this show know exactly precisely how to engineer millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of people. Go back to Tavistock, uh, Edward L. Bernays, mass mind control. It's very easy to do. There's no guesswork in it. It's a hard, exact science. They know how to make the masses respond. They know how to make them think. And if they don't come along voluntarily, believe me, there are many ways to force them to do it. You have now approximately 80% of the population, I know you saw the story, facing what the story said are poverty and joblessness. Yep. 80%. No not, not 20, not 25. Yep. Yep. 80, that's, see, that's terminal to yep. a, a culture. You can't have that. Again, and you go to the why. It's a takeover. It's a plantation economy. It's no longer the plantations in the South. The plantations are the corporations that you work for. And exactly. It's even, a, it's even a better deal because unlike the plantations where you had to house and feed them, you don't even have to do that anymore. No. You know, so this is much better. You could just use them up and spit them out. You don't care about yeah. them at all. It's a, the age and, of expendability. And, and, yep. Exactly. So again, I don't see any... <clears throat> Any changes coming? And the other thing about you're talking about the uh, art. How about the art of self-respect? There you go. I, you yeah. know, I'm a researcher. I have to go to malls and and see what's going on. And two weeks ago, I did my mall travels. Oh, I'd love to sit next to you and observe for an hour. Uh, that would be a kick. Oh, what a sad, sad yeah. scene! Looking at all these young kids. Oh, gone. Dressed like pigs. And as heavy as pigs. And identical. They look almost all the same. I, I mean, I cannot pierced. believe yeah. seeing young boys and girls in, you know, in their early teens being so grossly fat. Piggy. Piggy. Oink, and oink. dressed like slobs. They're doing a movie up here um, in, in Kingston. Uh -huh. I don't I got two big stars. I don't know their names. And I'm not into that stuff. Anyway, I, I walked by before. And uh, the whole crew, the whole crew were dressed like, as we would say, cuffons. Yeah, yeah everybody's yeah. dressed like a slob. Slobs, yeah. Yeah, there's no decorum. No. So I don't think, I think the human spirit has to change. And people then write to me, well, you know, can't afford to dress up. Look, if you could buy a pair of jeans. That's not true. You could buy a shirt. You could dress nicely. That's right, exactly and, and right. I'm not talking about designer clothes. No, 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 no. And you could go to you could go to a Goodwill. Yeah. You could go to a Salvation Army. You go to thrift sure. shops, where they call them uh, vintage stores now, and you could buy really fine vintage garments stores. at very cheap prices. Uh -huh. Okay. And that's yeah. the second part of my mall travels. All right. Here's the, here's the deal. When you see on the outside tattoos, piercings, uh, dead eyes, obese bodies. 
ugly clothing, dirty clothing, unkempt, obviously unkempt people. Is that a reflection, uh, don't answer, is that a reflection of the inner workings of the mind and psyche, or is it a reflection of engineered social engineering and peer pressure? Well, the answer obviously is, is all of the above. But where you draw the line, it depends on which person is involved. But these kids, young people, are so beset upon with utter domination by their peers, they are scared to step out of line. And you know what else, which you see in the malls, and you folks would too, is these people walking around, Gerald, and in one hand or the other is a surgically grafted smartphone into their hand. Oh, yeah. They yeah. can't even put it in their damn pocket anymore. Oh, no, I know. Uh, they hold that phone, and, and I here's my theory. Every You watch them. I've watched them. Every 20, 30 seconds, many of them, not all, many, will put that phone up in front of the face and look at it to see if they've been texted or if they got a message. And if they did, they'll stop, and both thumbs, those flying thumbs, start writing back. Boom, 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 boom. And, you know, if they don't get a message... I'm I'm willing to wager, there haven't been any peer-reviewed papers done on this, I'm willing to wager now that the pressure is so intense that the people actually lose feelings of self-worth if they're not being contacted by someone at a very fast pace in their lives. They, they've got to have this, it's an amphetamine lifestyle, audio, video, cell phone, text phone, I don't care what it is. It's pace, 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 pace. If they don't get a message or a text, I think... Honestly, many of them feel, oh, what's wrong with me? What? Why are I? What's where? They get and, and it's all, it's all, it's all, it's it runs through all demographic, socioeconomic, and all of uh, them. racial patterns. Uh, oh, uh, totally non-discriminatory. Included. Absolutely. And, and there's another another factor in 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 my travels, and it's very interesting because I, you know, as part of the subscription to the Trends Journal, and by the way. The, we're late on the summer issue. It won't be out until next Wednesday. Right. And but we're redoing the entire magazine. Really? It, oh, it's entirely redone. It's going to be like it's going to. I will say there will be no magazine that comes close to it in the world. Uh, it, it's totally changed. Uh, we brought in a top top group to to rework it. But wow. It, it's as part of what I was saying, though, and we come back after the break, is more of what I saw at the mall and how it relates to the economy today. Very good. Okay, we'll uh, do that. So, uh, folks, by all means, the new issue. Uh, you need to get that. It's already a. I I don't know what, how you can make it much better, uh, but I I understand it, what it, you're it, saying. Yeah. Uh. All right, I got a little one comment when we come back about. Time magazine, and then I want to hear more about the mall with Gerald in a minute. TrendsResearch.com. Uh, get over there and sign up right now, the new edition. I can't wait to see it. I, uh, Gerald, it's been about 10 years since I, oh, 15, since I picked up uh, an issue of Time Magazine. Uh, there was one on a table, and I, I picked it up and opened it up. H- have you seen one lately? <laughs> yeah. It, it, it looks like a... Nothing, I know. It looks like a, a, a trash cartoon book of, of some kind. I don't... It's worse than People... People Magazine looks great in comparison. Now, that's a, a hideous thing to say. Time Magazine looks like a piece of refuse, junk, garbage. It has been gutted. There's no intellect. There's nothing there. It's trash. It looks like it has no identity, no direction. 
It's gone. It's a piece of... Uh, like Newsweek, it's gone. To- too. Gone. Yeah. Piece of toilet paper. Yeah, yesterday's oh. news last week. Not in time. No, <laughs> and they, just, they could have called it Not in Time magazine. They should. That's yeah, good. They, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, so anyway, go to the mall, and here's what, you know, as I was mentioning, part of the subscription is every night, Monday through Friday, I do trends in the news. The real news, not the garbage news. Yeah. And um, after I got back from my mall research... And I went into a Macy's, and I was shocked at the low quality of goods, clothing goods, that Macy's was selling. You know, I, 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 I Walmart know, stuff. It was, you know, they have a fancy name on it, and it yeah. looks, it's it's junk. It came out of the same factory in China. Doesn't matter. So or somewhere. I said that. You know, I didn't, I thought Macy's was going to, uh, you know, they're, they're really going downhill fast. And sure enough, today they came out with their numbers and they were way off. And See? all of the stores are discounting like crazy. So that brings us to the economy. What's going to happen? The The only thing that's keeping the global economies alive, whether it's Japan Europe or the U.S., China, is the government's printing and flooding their economies with cheap money. And you're already seeing in the United States, 30-year mortgages fixed, uh, 30-year mortgage has gone up uh, 100 basis points since May. Hmm. So um, if interest rates go up, the economy goes down because the only thing it's really pushing this economy forward at any level at all mm-hmm. is the little uptick in housing. And that's being totally sustained by record low mortgage rates. Right. And it's the same thing worldwide. Everybody's lowering their interest rates to record lows. As a matter of fact, check this number out. In the UK, the interest rate is at the lowest rate in the 300 years since the founding of Great Britain. Uh, so I don't even know what it is here. Four? Oh, well, no. A, 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 30 year, a 30 year now went up from like 3.5 to like 4.32 or something like that. Uh-huh. When I started buying these historic buildings, the Colonial Kingston, you know, what, the uh, 1750 Franz Rogan House, the 1770. I think that's Fort great Academy. what you're doing. That's just wonderful. Thank yeah. you. I, I got on one of them a 15-year locked-in, you ready for this, 2.875, <laughs> and that was in yeah. March, so I got it right at the bottom. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, Jeff, the, you look at the employment numbers, you look at the types of jobs that are being created, you look at, oh, today Cisco announced they're laying off 4,000 people. Mm-hmm. These are higher paying jobs. Only only 17% of the jobs that have been created are in high income level. Hmm. And about 22% are estimated to be around middle middle income level. So you're losing now upper middle and, and upper income jobs. So where the economy is going, what's going to happen? At some point, at some point, they're going to have to raise interest rates. When that happens, this thing goes on crash course. Well, we already and, up. We're, we're at six to nine percent actual inflation right now. It's close. It's 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 upwards of almost ten. It's getting there. Well, of course, but if not according to the government because they oh, lie. No. What right. government? So now, when you look also at the economy and what's going on, the other the other big factors that I see destabilizing it, it's going to be war. And what you, what's going on right now, hey, how about, I wonder how the little uh, royal prince is doing over there, you know? Uh, let's change the subject. We'll talk about that guy, the carnival guy that had a uh, uh, an Obama uh, mask clown on. Uh-huh. You know, we could talk about that. We'll avoid what yeah. the Egyptian war really means, a of country of 80 million people. That 90, is in 90. the... 90, 90. In, in, in the midst of a civil war, yeah. and you're looking, as you ran down the list before, Syria, Libya, Bahrain, Yemen, 
keep going around and look at Tunisia, you're looking at a totally destabilized Middle East. Oh, oh you want to talk about oil prices? Yeah. You want to talk about what's going to happen? They're not looking, the economists cannot look beyond their basket of statistics. These are the things to look at. And again, it's hardly making the U.S. news, and when it does, it's being reported in distorted ways. Or else they float some story out that's a kidnapped victim or something, and they push that for a couple of days. Any, anything to keep people from seeing the world as it really is. You know, I mentioned, uh, I don't know how much time you spent in Philadelphia, but uh, they had one of these uh, flash opera house things. And I, if I can, I'd like to play just a minute of it. It's got, the nice thing, it's got, well, I'll tell you how many views in just a minute. This is an opera company of Philadelphia at the uh, Reading Terminal Market. It's like a big mall kind of a thing. And, and this, is, this is something that most of these people have never heard before. Everybody starts looking around. Where's that music coming from? Anyway, they go on and the music continues. So it's an, an aria from, it's a, a duet from La Traviata. And this is what we were talking about earlier. These people, in many cases, yeah, they might have heard the melody. I, a lot of them haven't. They're young kids. But it reaches out and touches something in these people that they have been intentionally disconnected from. I mean, they're, they're calling rap music. It's not music. Call what you want. Sure. It's not music. There's no yeah. instruments in it. No, and it's it's and if it's they just do, cadence. it's techno. Yeah, it's, it's a cadence. And I see all these loser kids walk by, you know, yelling out rap. They think they're going to be like like they, like some kid thinks he's going to be a basketball or football star. That's all you know, it so is. They're running on empty. Yeah. And by the way, when you're talking about tattoos and all of this, I I saw this with the whole punk rock thing. It was a way of making a statement without ever having to do anything. Let me show you how angry I am, what I can do to myself and how I could express my individuality without ever doing a damn thing to make change. That, to me, is the way I see it. And I'm just saying, I'm not saying that's the way it is. That's the way I see it. And anybody's entitled to see it their own way. But they're not doing anything. It's a freak show out there, as I see it. And until people find the self-respect within themselves, nothing is going to change. And when I talk about self-respect, look at the clowns that they have running for political office. Look yeah. at this in the, over here in New York. You got this guy, Spitzer. Spitzer's yeah. old man. This is a guy born on third base and thought he hit a triple. You know, <laughs> guys, his father's a real uh -huh. estate magnet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and anyway, here's a guy that passes the John Law in New York. If you get caught with a hooker, you get busted. That's too funny. He gets caught with a, what, $3,000 a night hooker, and yeah. now he's running for controller. And then you got this Wiener. You could not make up a better you name. can make it up. Anthony Wiener. Anthony Wiener, the guy that shows his pecker on, on, on Facebook and under, under his underwear. And, and now he's running for, for mayor. And you look at this guy. Yeah. He's a freak. Yeah, he's I know. a freak. Well, we live in a freak culture. And exactly. Freak, freakism and, is often an advantage. And now let's go back to the opera. And I've mentioned this to you before, and I mentioned I went to see Rigoletto. Yeah. Verdi's main objective in composing the music that he did was to raise the spirit of the Italian people so that they would rise up against their oppressors. It's a fact. He did it with music. In the 1800s, most people don't know this. You know, Italy was controlled by peace. Germany had a peace. Austria, Hungary, France, Spain. 
a lot of people had a piece of Italy. It was almost a bloodless revolution. It worked. The model exists. He did it with music. What is that? You know, that, that, that uh, 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 calm the savage breast. You know, the power of music. And people don't realize it, just like they don't want to admit that they took the lowest common denominator of society, the gangsters, the most violent criminals in the penal system that they wouldn't give shoelaces to or belts because they would strangle you with them, and they made a fashion and a music statement out of it. Just as you can use yeah. music to yeah. raise the culture, they used it to destroy it, and it worked. Took it right into the gutter. You couldn't be more correct. Wow. All right. That's our program tonight. Tell them about the next issue, Gerald, again, please. Trends. Oh, tr uh, tr yeah. Trendsjournal.com. We're coming out with a new Trends Journal like no one has ever seen on the universe. Money-back guarantee. Uh, please sign up. If you don't like it, we'll gladly give you back your dough. And if you don't have any money and you can't afford the full price, there's a discount request page. The more people that sign up, the more that we can do. Wow. Okay, my friend. Thanks. Great to talk to you, as always. Keep buying those buildings. Uh, you'll be the mayor one day. Well, I don't want to be the mayor. As a matter of fact, kidding. he's a good guy over yeah. here. He's a, yeah. yeah, Mayor Gallo's a real good guy. He wants to make Kingston the best place it could be. Well, you're there, and that's a hell of a good start. Thank you, Gerald. Thank you, Jeff. Bye -bye. Okay, take care. And uh, what we'll do here is let you listen to a little bit more of that music from uh, the Reading Station Market as we go out this hour. Okay, and we'll be right back.